This is KGW News at Noon. Hello everyone, I'm Brenda Braxton. We begin with the latest on Ukraine and here are three things to know today. Number one, President Biden spoke with China's president this morning. The video call lasted for more than two hours. U.S. intelligence indicates Russia has asked China for military and economic support. President Biden warned China not to do that. Xi Jinping reiterated calls for dialogue to resolve the war and warned that sanctions against Russia could hurt the global economy. Number two, Vladimir Putin held a huge rally at a stadium in Moscow today. More than 200,000 people showed up. During his speech, Putin praised his troops and insisted his actions were necessary to prevent, quote, genocide, a claim leaders around the world have refuted. And number three, the American man, an American man, I should say, was killed in the Ukrainian town of Chernayev. He was waiting in a food line. Jim Hill's family confirms he was from Idaho, but he was living in Kyiv. And those are some of the headlines out of Ukraine today. And I just screamed at him to leave the, the kid alone and he let him go. And his mom, his mom was really frantic and screaming. A tigered mom and her neighbor stopped a kidnapper in the act. The seven-year-old boy was grabbed at his apartment complex and witnesses immediately jumped into action. Thankfully, the little guy's okay. Since this story broke, we do have more information, including neat new details about the suspect. He's 56-year-old James Harmon Jr. He's in jail today after his first court appearance. Tim Gordon has this update. The Fields apartment complex in Tigard is quiet now, but Wednesday evening it was a scary scene for neighbors. It was terrifying. It was it was very hard. Amanda Turpening noticed something happening by the playground she knew wasn't right. So she took this video, she says, is of Harmon and the seven-year-old boy just before they went into his apartment. I noticed that he was starting to lure the kid inside his apartment, so I ran down and I was like screaming for another neighbor to get him. And when we got to the, finally got to the back door, it was just closing and the door locked. The boy's mom, who had been watching her son play from inside her apartment, joined Amanda and other neighbors as they tried to get into Harmon's apartment. When they busted the door open, they found the place already empty, according to neighbor Jesse Okuna. And he proceeded to go out into the hallway and around the building with the child holding his hand. And so I was up in my apartment. I can see like a bird's eye view. And I was like, he's over here. And so I ran around the building and by this time, he was on the other side with the boy and I just screamed at him to leave the, the kid alone and he let him go and his mom his mom was really frantic and screaming. We called the cops and um, just checked on the mom and the little boy to make sure that he was okay and yeah, it was just really scary. The little boy is safe, but police say if not for community members acting, this could have been much worse. Investigators believed that this man intended to harm this child based on what they found at the scene. I'm Neighbors so like Amanda Turpening confirm what they saw inside the apartment was very troubling. Now neighbors are reflecting on a man they say made them uncomfortable before because of his interest in engaging their young children. Times are changing. Times are not like before where we can just leave our kids out and uh, let them have fun. You know, unfortunately, there's people like him who uh, we have to keep an eye on, too. Tim Gordon, KGW News. In Salem, federal agents say they busted Oregon's largest ghost gun manufacturing operation. They seized 68 weapons during raids on two homes during the past month. Ghost guns are built from kits and they don't have serial numbers, so they can't be traced. The agents also found about 200 counterfeit OxyContin pills laced with fentanyl. Well, despite a lack of interest, Portland's mayor has not given up on a program to hire retired police officers. At a press conference yesterday, Mayor Ted Wheeler said the city is looking at several strategies to attract new officers. The police bureau is facing record low staffing. Officers have been leaving faster than the bureau can fill their spots. 
In November, the city council approved spending almost half a million dollars to rehire 25 retired officers, but there really wasn't much interest. According to the police chief, of the 81 retired officers contacted, only a couple considered coming back. Um, am I frustrated? No. Uh, it was one of many strategies that we're pursuing, and at this point, it hasn't, uh, hasn't worked the way we would have hoped, but that's not the only game in town. There's other strategies that we'll continue to fight to support. The Police Bureau anticipates another large wave of retirements this summer. Almost 80 officers are eligible to retire. The Bureau is working to encourage those veteran officers to stick around under the Retire Rehire program. If money for that program isn't used, PPB will return it to the city.